Sitting with me here today is a commercial grade ozone generator and today in this video we're going to be putting it to the test and see just how effective ozone can be at sterilization. So this should be pretty exciting. Let's get started. Okay, so to start this experiment off, I went ahead and bought some cheap white bread here, and we're going to keep it simple. This is actually based off an experiment I did, I think it was like the fifth or the sixth grade for science class. And all I really did is took some bread and rubbed it on some surfaces like the floor or the walls, places in the bathroom, stuff like that. And then we put it in a bag and put a little bit of moisture in there and then left it in a dark place so it can grow uh, funguses or mold or whatever it wanted to grow on it. <laughs> so we're going to do the same thing in this video. I'm going to take eight pieces of this bread. Uh, rub them on all the surfaces, and then four of those pieces are going to go in what I'm calling my sterilization chamber. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Here is the eight pieces of white bread I have laid across the floor, and I'm going to be basically just taking them and moving them all in a straight line uh, so they all pick up something off of the floor, you know, whether it might be mold spores or whatever. And um, I'm doing it this way because if I was to take one piece of bread and just smear it across the floor, or take another piece of bread, smear it in the same spot, obviously I'm picking up something that's more on one piece than the other because it's essentially cleaning that spot in a sense. So I'm going to be moving these across the floor in a straight line and then obviously my hands haven't been washed in a while so I'm making sure I'm touching them at least on one side with my hands as well so I can get something on there from my hands. Okay, so I went ahead and rubbed these pieces of bread in a few more places off camera, uh, like the bathroom floor and the shower walls, and I really wouldn't wish it on anybody to eat these pieces of bread. It's almost like a guaranteed illness. Uh, so what I have over here is actually a control. Uh, I washed my hands and I took this out of the bag and put this directly in here. There's no moisture in here. I did not rub this on anything. It went from basically point A to point B, so that's our control. Uh, in that bottle there is uh, RODI water or reverse osmosis deionized water. It's about as pure as water can get. And then I went ahead and boiled it as well. And that is also a sterilized container. So it's perfectly clean. I'm going to spray that in each one of these bags. And then these four pieces are going to go down in the sterilization chamber. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Here is my sterilization chamber, as I'm calling it. It's actually just a grow tent. And I've got everything pretty well sealed up in here. This is sealed up, basically any openings in the tent. Um, about as sealed up as it's going to be besides it being completely airtight. So there's my ozone generator. I'm going to turn it on, probably run it for about a half an hour. That's actually overkill for this size area. You would never do that, but this is just for the experiment to see, you know, what it can, what can happen, how good it works. So there's my bags are on the floor there. I even put the gloves in here make sure they're sterilized. So when I put them on, I'm going to be handling the pieces of bread and putting them in the pieces of bag so that it doesn't touch anything else that's not sterile. And I'm about halfway through, I'm probably going to flip those pieces of bread over just because the parts there that they're resting on, uh, you know, maybe air isn't getting to that. So I'm going to try to flip them over and see if that helps out at all. So we're going to go ahead and run that and then come back. All right, so I ran the ozone generator in this closed up grow tent for 30 minutes like I said I would do. I also flipped the bread over. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the gloves on, put the bread in these bags, and then I'm going to spray the water in the bags. And what I did for the other bags is I put two spritz of that in the bags and then closed them up. So we're going to do that right now. All right, here is everything all bagged and labeled, and we're going to go ahead and put these in a dark area, and we're going to come back and take a look and see what happens. Okay, so while we're waiting for that bread experiment to finish up, because it is taking a long time, it's been two weeks already, and not a lot is happening. So I figured I would go ahead and do something maybe a little more definitive. And what this is here is a uh, incubation chamber. It's literally just a box. There's a rack inside here, and I bought some Petri dishes. And this is a heat mat here. This is mostly for gardening stuff. And this is an inline... Uh, thermostat. So with the number you're seeing on the screen right now is a little low is because I opened it. Uh, I've been keeping this at about 90 degrees and it's working out very well uh, to keep a stable temperature. So I put some petri dishes in here. We're going to take a look at these. All right, this is what's inside the box. These are my petri dishes. You can see that they're all labeled and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, see they're sitting on top of this rack here. That's just to keep them off the bottom where the main source of the heat is. Uh, this is just for a uh, more controlled temperature conditions. So very easy to set up. This was very simple. So I'll talk about a couple things, but let me pull these out of the box. 
Okay, now that they're out of the box, it should be easier to talk about these. The first thing I wanna talk about is the control here. And this is basically just taking the sterile Q-tips that come with the kit, which are in a sealed package, and then dipping them into some sterile water and seeing what happens, just to make sure we don't have any bacteria to start with. And if you look really closely here, there's little specks on the surface, very hard to see, uh, nothing major, but there's little tiny specks, and that's bacterial colonies. Uh, so what that's basically showing is nothing is perfectly sterile. And this is after three days of actually growing in the uh, incubator. So not a lot, but this is showing what we're starting with, and I might want to address this as well before I continue on with the next part of this experiment, which I'll talk about in a minute here. The other thing I wanted to show is these, or this one here. This is actually from my fingers, obviously it's labeled that. But I took one of these out of the package and I accidentally, the lid fell off and I touched the surface with my finger and I said, well, I can't use this now because it's contaminated. But here's the thing. I washed my hands and this is about 20 minutes after I washed my hands. I was just touching a few things around the house. Uh, nothing gross or anything, just maybe doorknobs or uh, faucet handle, stuff like that. And look how much bacteria grew on this Petri dish just from that. So just thought that'd be interesting to show that as well. So going over to here, uh, what I did is I actually took the cotton swabs and I swabbed my shower. Obviously it's labeled shower. So I swabbed the shower wall, the tile, uh, to see what would happen. So this is the shower swab right here. And I did this basically the same way I did the bread experiment. So I swabbed this, I put these in the incubation chamber, and then I swabbed these, and I put these in the sterilization chamber with the ozone generator. So we'll take a look at that in a second here. But here's a shower swab. And you can see that we got some, besides the little tiny specks, we got some other bacterial colonies growing. Not a lot. This is pretty surprising considering this is a shower wall. I figured this would be a lot worse. But a couple of colonies on there. Not a whole lot, pretty small, but they're there. Uh, here's the other one. I did two, two of these for each part of the experiment. And here's the other one. So we can, we have a lot more actually. If you look closely, there's more colonies growing on this one. Uh, looks like maybe two or three times the amount there. I didn't count them. And then these here are after I put these in the ozone chamber, the sterilization chamber. And you can see that what's interesting is you see those, there's no tiny little specks on there on this one. So far, every one you've seen has tiny little specks on it, and this one doesn't have all those tiny little specks. There's a couple colonies growing there, uh, certainly less, but this surface is actually pretty clean considering, besides the maybe three or four little tiny colonies growing on there. So that's that one, and here's the other one. It's got some, uh, it's got some uh, moisture in the condensation on the top there, but same thing here, look at that. There's one pretty good sized colony there, but again, I don't want to open that. It's, it's got condensation on there. I don't want to open it. Um, again, the little tiny specks, they're not there. So it's obviously doing something. And here's what else I did. I, I took um, this one here, it says surface swab after ozone. So what I basically did is I took the litter box scooper, the thing that used to scoop out the litter box, the, you know, I touched it with my hands, and obviously that's sitting next to a litter box. It's not clean whatsoever. I put that in the ozone uh, sterilization chamber, the grow tent, and then I swabbed it. And you can see here, we got some small little colonies on there, uh, and then one maybe a lar you know, larger one. But considering how gross some of these surfaces should be, um, this is kind of showing that I think it's somewhat effective. Now, here's what I'm getting to. I don't think this is a very good test, but what I'm gonna do now is I've taken this phone here. This is a, this hasn't been cleaned ever, okay? I have not cleaned this with alcohol ever. So it's, it's about as filthy as it can possibly be, especially when you're touching this all day long. And I even touched it more on all these surfaces with my fingers, just like I'm doing now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swab this half and I'm going to put that on a Petri dish and we'll put it in the incubation chamber. And then I'm going to put this whole phone in the sterilization chamber with the ozone generator, and then I'm gonna swab this half. 
and we're going to see if there's a difference. And I think that should give us more uh, a more definitive uh, experiment and test to make sure it's actually doing something. All right, now that we got that controlled experiment underway and everything is in the incubation chamber, I'm going to do another real-world situation. And I only got one petri dish left, and I normally wouldn't do this with just one, but I'm going to divide this in half pretty well. I got two sterile cotton swabs also. So I'm going to take my other phone, I'm going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to take the phone and put it in a large room or I should say a normal size room, about a 12 by 16, rather than putting this uh, ozone generator in a very small space. So that's going to give us more of a real-world situation of where she would uh, normally find these uh, being ran in, so a larger environment. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back uh, after the, everything is done and incubated. All right, so it has been one week. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Something's going on there. It should be interesting. All right, here is the swab that he took from the half of the phone before I put it in the grow tent with the ozone generator. And here is the swab that he took from the other half of the phone after I put it in the grow tent with the ozone generator. And you can clearly see there's a difference in the number of colonies here. So on this side, we got basically three major colonies and then a bunch more over here. You can count them if you want to. Uh, same thing we saw in the earlier part of this experiment, not this one in particular, but the one you just saw previous to this. Uh, we got specks all over the place here, and I don't think this was from the Q-tips. I think it was actually might have been from the water itself, uh, but mainly what we're looking at here is uh, just these colonies here compared to those, so there's clearly a difference. So obviously it's not 100% effective. I do think, though, though, if we actually left it in there longer, maybe t the double the amount of time, we may have achieved 100% effectiveness. But I do have to add, though, that there's a difference between making something sanitary and making something sterile. Sterile basically means that nothing should exist on there at all, and sanitary basically just means it's been cleaned enough to where it's considered safe. And you'll find that with any kind of cleaners you might use, some just regular old house cleaners, uh, nothing is gonna be 100% effective, not even soap, uh, which I will be doing another part to this experiment in another video, so if you wanna follow along, uh, stay tuned for that. But this here is basically showing that you're probably getting the same level of effectiveness as any other type of cleaner, aside from maybe bleach or something like that, but that's a different category in itself. So let's take a look at one more Petri dish here. And this one here, this one is from the, where I put the ozone generator in a larger room. So you have a lower concentration of ozone. But you can clearly see here that it looks to me like it's still somewhat effective. So this half up here, this was taken from the half of the phone before I put it in the room with the generator, and over here, this half here, is from after. So you can clearly see there is a difference. So if it's this effective on stuff that's swabbed from a surface, you can almost guarantee that it's going to do an even better job on things that it might be airborne, so pathogens and stuff like that maybe mold spores. Uh, also, what it does do a very good job of is removing odors, so VOCs, volatile organic compounds. Uh, and you'll notice that if you do buy one of these, that if you run it in a room, it'll basically smell fresh for a long time. Uh, that is until whatever is causing that odor in that room uh, starts to produce more odors again. So you might have to keep doing it maybe once a month or something like that. It just depends on your situation. So this was definitely a fun little experiment to do, and as far as the bread experiment goes, I'm going to be putting the results from that at the end of this video, uh, just because it's taking so long. So as far as the reason why I got this particular unit is just because I thought it was the best value at the time. Uh, it wasn't too expensive, and it puts out quite a bit of ozone at 10,000 milligrams or 10 grams per hour. And on that note, if you do decide to get something like this, make sure that you are following, following the instructions and do not run this in an occupied space. So no pets, no living things, no plants even, because it can even hurt plants. Uh, I mean, that's kind of the point of it is sterilization, so you can expect it to cause some damage. But you don't have to worry about too much of that because ozone has a half-life, and if you just give it a couple hours, it basically just converts back into oxygen anyways. So the reason why I got this unit is actually because I'm going to be using it to sterilize the stuff that I grow with. So uh, hydroponics, so buckets, uh, clay clay pebbles, rock wool cubes, net pots, anything that I've already kind of washed. I'm going to be putting it in my grow tent, run this for a little bit, and then further sterilize it just to prevent any diseases that could occur during growing.
This video here was actually inspired by Jay over Plasma Channel, and he did another video uh, very similar to this, and I'm going to be linking it up here if you want to watch that video. So if you're interested in anything you saw here in the video, including this, go ahead and check the description. They will be affiliate links. Uh, I do make a small commission off of that, but that doesn't increase the price at all. It just helps me out and my channel. So thank you for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. All right, it's been one month since I've started this bread experiment, and I am really glad that I did the Petri dish thing because this here didn't really prove anything. Let's have a look. So here's all the pieces. These were kept at room temperature for two weeks and then two weeks in the incubation chamber at about 82 degrees. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot happening. And I apologize for my voice right now. I've been sick for a while, so, but I'm doing okay. So here we have the non-sterilized pieces. So these were the ones that were not put in the ozone generating chamber. And you can see here that we got a little bit of mold there can see that uh, this piece has nothing this piece has some red mold starting right in here very hard to see and then the same thing over here we got a little bit of red mold and some green mold starting in there uh, the control here has nothing on it at all and these pieces here that were put in the sterilization chamber have pretty much nothing on them um, there's a little bit of weird coloration here and I think that's just from the uh, saturation from the, the water but yeah none of these here and I've looked pretty closely there's really nothing on them at all um, I mean maybe if I was to look under a microscope I could probably find something but these are pretty clean so obviously this is not a definitive experiment by any means and that's exactly why I use the petri dishes instead because looking back at it um, bread can have uh, you know, mold spores within the bread itself, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the ozone's going to get to it. So it would be kind of flawed. So this doesn't really prove a whole lot other than the fact that this bread has a lot of preservatives in it. I mean, a month after what I've done with this bread, I would have thought would have gotten more moldy. So there's going to be another experiment coming up with more petri dishes, as, as I said earlier in this video, so stay tuned.